Hey everybody, welcome to day 42 of our Bible in a Year Plus podcast. I'm very glad to be with you today. Today we're going to finish the book of Leviticus, do you believe it? And uh, we're going to talk about why good things tend to happen to those who obey the Lord. A young girl from Kansas wrote a post about charging outside when she was a kid to ride her brand new bike and as she was exiting the house, she heard her mother yell after her, put your shoes on before you go. And she says, I ignored her, of course. And in her hurry, she went to the house of her friend and she wanted her, her friend to see the new bike. And her, of course, her new friend wanted to ride it. And so they worked it out that her new friend would drive because she's a little older. And then this girl would sit on the handlebars and uh, they would go together. So they were on the handlebar. She was on the handlebars. Her friend was driving the bike, but it was really wobbly and she started going faster and faster. And pretty soon, uh, the girl on the handlebars was getting pretty scared. So she decided that she was going to bail. She, she pushed against the handlebars, jumped off, and then all of a sudden, pow, yikes, ouch. Her foot got caught in the spokes of the wheel. She's on the side of the road there, bleeding profusely. And she looks down and there's her pinky toe, like off, gone. The spokes had cut her pinker, pinky toe right off. She, of course, was rushed to the doctors. The doctors tell her parents, there's really no reason to try to reattach this. It's not going to work very well. There could be infection. We don't think you should try to attach it. And so they decided just to sew her up and she would never have a pinky toe again uh, to wear with her sandals and all those things. It would all look different and she'd have a lot of explaining to do. And she just wept. She wept and wept. And she said the whole time she was crying, she just kept thinking about her mom calling after her, put your shoes on before you go out. Just painful. Well, today we're going to talk about why lucky breaks, we're using that in quotes, right? Lucky breaks. Um, why lucky breaks seem to come to those who obey the Lord. And this is at the close of Leviticus, what the Lord is talking about. So Leviticus 26 and 27, we'll begin with chapter 26, verse 1 in the King James Version of the Bible with updated vocabulary, but you can follow along in another version if you prefer. Leviticus 26, 1. You shall make you no idols nor engraved image, neither set up a standing image, neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land to bow down to it, for I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary, I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and your threshing shall last until your grape harvest, and the grape harvest shall last until the planting time, and you shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your own land safely. And I will give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and no one shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. And you shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword." And five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect to you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. And you shall eat the old storage, and bring out the old because of the new. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people." I am the Lord your God who brought you forth out of the land of Egypt and that you should not be their slaves. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. But if you will not listen to me and will not do all these commandments, and if you will despise my statutes or if your soul abhors my judgments so that you will not do all my commandments, but that you break my covenant, I also will do this to you. I will even appoint over you terror, wasting, and the burning fever that shall consume your eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and you shall plant your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I'll set my face against you, and you shall be killed before your enemies. They who hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when no one pursues you. And if you will not yet for all this listen to me, 
Then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. And I will break the pride of your power. And I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. And your strength shall be spent in vain. For your land shall not yield her increase. Neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. And if you walk contrary to me and will not listen to me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I will send wild beasts among you who shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number and your highways shall be desolate. And if you will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary to me, then I will also walk contrary to you and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when you are gathered together within your cities, I will send the plague among you and you shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, 10 women shall bake your bread in one oven and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight and you shall eat and not be satisfied. And if you will not for all this listen to me, but walk contrary to me, then I will walk contrary to you also in fury, and I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. And you shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters you shall eat, and I will destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. And I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries to desolation. And I will not smell the fragrance of your sweet aromas. And I will bring the land into desolation. And your enemies which dwell in it shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the nations and will draw out a sword after you. And your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths as long as it lies desolate. And you are in the enemy's land, even then the land shall enjoy rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. As long as it lies desolate, it shall rest, because it did not rest in your Sabbaths when you lived upon it. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faint heartedness into their hearts and the lands of their enemies. And the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when no one pursues. And they shall fall one upon another as if it were a sword when no one pursues. And you shall have no power to stand before your enemies, and you shall perish among the nations, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall waste away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquities of their fathers, they shall waste away with them. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they have trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary to me, and that I also have walked contrary to them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts are humbled, and then they accept the punishment of their iniquity, then I will remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham. I will remember and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her Sabbaths when it lies desolate without them. And they shall accept the punishment of their iniquity because even because they despise my judgments and because their soul abhorred my statutes. And yet for all that, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. Neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. Behold, uh, but I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. Chapter 27. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When a man shall make a singular vow, the person shall be for the Lord by your estimation. And your estimation shall be of the male from 20 years old, even to 60 years old. Even your estimation shall be 50 shekels of silver after the shekels of the sanctuary. And if it is a female, then your estimation shall be 30 shekels. And if it is from five years old, even to 20 years old, even your estimation shall be for the male, 
20 shekels, and for the female, 10 shekels. And if it be from a month old, even to five years old, then your estimation shall be for the male, five shekels of silver, and for the female, your estimation shall be three shekels of silver. And if it be from 60 years old and above, if it is a male, then your estimation shall be 15 shekels, and for the female, 10 shekels. But if he is poorer than your estimation, then he shall present himself before the priest, and the priest shall value him according to his ability, who vowed shall the priest value him. And if it is a beast of which men bring an offering to the Lord, all that any man gives of such to the Lord shall be holy. He shall not alter it nor change it, a good for a bad or a bad for a good. And if he shall at all change beast for beast, then it and the exchange of it thereof shall be holy. And if it is an unclean beast, of which they do not offer a sacrifice to the Lord, then he shall present the beast before the priest. And the priest shall value it, whether it is good or bad. As you value it, who are the priests, so shall it be. But if he will at all redeem it, then he shall add a fifth part of it to your estimation. And when a man shall sanctify his house to be holy to the Lord, then the priest shall estimate it, whether it is good or bad, as the priest shall estimate, so shall stand. And if he that sanctified it will redeem his house, then he shall add the fifth part of the money of the estimation to it, and it shall be his. And if a man shall sanctify to the Lord some part of a field of his possession, then the estimation shall be according to the seed of it, A homer of barley seed shall be valued at 50 shekels of silver. If he sanctify his field from the year of Jubilee, according to your estimation, it shall stand. But if he sanctify his field after the Jubilee, then the priest shall determine to him the money according to the years that remain even to the year of Jubilee, and it shall be deducted from your estimation. And if he who sanctified the field will in any way redeem it, then he shall add the fifth part of the money of your estimation to it, and it shall be made sure to him. And if he will not redeem the field, or if he has sold the field to another man, it shall not be redeemed any more. But the field, when it goes out in the jubilee, shall be holy to the Lord as a field devoted, the possession thereof shall be the priests. And if a man sanctifies unto the Lord a field which he has bought, which is not of the fields of his possession, then the priest shall determine on him the worth of your estimation, even to the year of the Jubilee, and he shall give your estimation in that day as a holy thing to the Lord. In the year of the Jubilee, the field shall return to him of whom it was bought, even to him whom the possession of the land did belong. And all your estimation shall be according to the shekel of the sanctuary, twenty geras shall be the shekel. Only the firstling of the beast, which should be the Lord's firstling, no man shall sanctify it, whether it be ox or sheep, it is the Lord's. And if it is of an unclean beast, then he shall redeem it according to your estimation and add a fifth part of it thereto. Uh, Or if it is not redeemed, then it shall be sold according to your estimation. Now a standing. No devoted thing that a man shall devote to the Lord of all that he has, both of man and beast, and of the possession of his field, shall be sold or redeemed. Every devoted thing is most holy to the Lord. None devoted, which shall be devoted of men, shall be redeemed, but shall surely be put to death. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. And if a man wishes at all to redeem anything of his tithes, he shall add to it the fifth part. And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock, even of whatever passes under the rod, the tenth shall be holy to the Lord. He shall not search whether it is good or bad, neither shall he change it. And if he changes it at all, then both it and the change thereof shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel in Mount Sinai. Well, and that concludes our reading of Leviticus. Now I want to say something quickly about chapter 27 and then spend more time in chapter 26. In chapter 27, verses 1 through 25, you have this um, 
this description of how offering the monetary value of a person or possession or real estate uh, can be uh, devoted to the Lord as gifts. And so you could give the item or you could give the money either way, and this is how you decide what each thing is worth. And so that's a long and involved um, discussion, but we are not going to say anything further about that, only that things could be donated to the Lord's service, either temporarily or permanently, and then the money could also be used instead of the object, if, if that's what you prefer. All right, but coming then back to chapter 26. Uh, this is a very important text of Scripture because it's talking about the promises and the calamities that will come to the Israelites depending on their conduct. It was all conditioned upon their conduct, their obedience. And this is a good time for me to spend just a few minutes kind of sorting through this with you uh, because you do not live in the Old Testament age. All right, so here is the breakdown of this. The Mount Sinai Mosaic Covenant that we've talked about so many times in the last couple of weeks. Uh, this was uh, a very special covenant, and it involves, as you can see, by the same token, this, this was said in the book of Exodus as well, chapter 20. Um, this covenant was a conditional covenant. And if a critical mass of Israelites obeyed, then the Lord was going to send all kinds of promised blessings. But if a critical mass of Israelites disobeyed, then the Lord is going to send many calamities. And you can see that the blessings and the calamities were related to their health, their length of life, their agricultural prosperity, their simple money, uh, the number of the children they have, victory in battle, all of these things, and all conditioned upon their conduct. Then you see, and we will see uh, right away in the book of Numbers, they toggle back and forth between obeying and not obeying, blessing and calamity. They toggle back and forth until finally, as you know, at the end of the Old Testament, you have the nation of Israel going into captivity, and then you have, even to this day, global anti-Semitism. Um, things did not go well for them because they did not continue in the Lord's covenant, and they did not get the wonderful blessings of that covenant. All right, but it must be remembered in the midst of all of this that before there was ever a Moses or a covenant on Mount Sinai, the Mosaic covenant, there was already a a cluster of promises given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and these were locked promises that could not in any way be broken. And so besides the Moses promises, you have the Abraham promises, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and these were locked into place. Remember, they include the locked promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob include a land forever, the Lord's special chosen status forever, and a messianic rescuer forever. And this was long before there was a Moses or a Mount Sinai covenant. All right, now the Mount Sinai Mosaic covenant is a single unit, not divided, chopped up into different bits. It's a single unit. And so what we have in the Old Testament is the failure of this contract, this covenant between Moses and the nation. It failed. And that's why the Lord utterly replaced it with what he calls the new covenant. And the new covenant is where we live. We live under the new covenant. The new covenant says, and the apostles teach us this in so many ways, the new covenant says that we are free from the law. We're delivered from the law. We're dead to the law. We're not under the law. All this talking about the covenant of Moses and the covenant that he uh, brought down from Mount Sinai. We're not under that. We're free from it. We're delivered from it. We're dead to it. That's the way the New Testament, the New Covenant sounds. All right, so today, unless we're reading all these rules in the Old Testament, here's what you have to know. Today, unless a rule from the Old Testament is repeated in the New Testament, we are not obligated to obey it. So, for example, all of the Ten Commandments are repeated in the New Testament, so we obey them except for one, and that's the commandment about the Sabbath. Not only is the Sabbath law not repeated in the New Testament, it is actually contradicted in the New Testament in Colossians 2.16, where it says, don't let any man judge you as to whether you are keeping the law of the Sabbath. It is not a regulation to be observed. You can observe it if you want to, but it's not a regulation. It's not a directive. It's not a command. So all the commands in the New Testament 
uh, all the all the Ten Commandments from the Old Testament are repeated in the New Testament, except Sabbath. So we obey all of those Ten Commandments except Sabbath, and this also explains why we are not obligated to keep the Mosaic laws about dress code, for example. We talked about why don't we mix our wool and linen in the same garment. Um, you know, that was a Mosaic law. We don't obey that. We don't have to because we're not under the Mosaic covenant. We're under the new covenant. And that dress code was not repeated in the New Testament. Uh, we also are not obligated to cut our hair in certain ways or shave our beard in certain ways. Uh, we are not obligated to uh, have four fringes hanging from our belt or our shirt tail, as the Jewish people were. We're not obligated to avoid tattoos. Uh, the Jewish people were not allowed to have tattoos. And so all of this is Old Covenant. It's not repeated in the New Testament, and we do not have an obligation to obey it then. Same with the dietary laws. Same with the Jewish holidays. Same with the quarantine laws for skin infections. We don't obey these because we are not obligated to obey them. We are not in the Mosaic Covenant. We're in the New Covenant. And so that is why we love the Old Testament. But the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, is not our rule book. The New Testament is. And one more thing to remember. All of the pre-Mount Sinai, pre-Mosaic Covenant promises are still standing. The promises God made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they shall be fulfilled. God will absolutely fulfill those. You can't just say, oops, it didn't work out that we never gave you the full promised land. Oops, sorry. Uh, it never worked out that um, you had special chosen status, chosen people status with God forever. Whoops, sorry. It didn't work out. All of those promises have to be fulfilled, and they shall be fulfilled in the end times. That's why all of the prophets say that even though the people under Moses broke the Mosaic covenant, the Abrahamic covenant still stands and it will all be done as a matter of promise. So you have to bear this in mind that yes, the Mosaic Mount Sinai covenant was conditional and the people broke the covenant wasn't God's fault. It was their fault. God held up his end. They did not hold up their end. They broke the covenant, and that's why we have all the trouble with Jewish people today uh, enduring anti-Semitism and the Holocaust and all those things. We're very sorry for all of that, but that's exactly what the Lord said would happen if they break that covenant. Well, now we still know that in the end times, the promises will come to pass, not because it's Mosaic covenant, but because it's Abrahamic, Isaac, Jacob covenant, and um, the end times will still bring all those promises to pass. It's important for you to sort through that so you know why we don't keep all of the Old Testament uh, laws. All right, so what's our big life lesson from all of this? Be blessable. Even though most of us are not ethnically Jewish, and uh, not automatically associated by DNA, by birth, uh, to the promises that were given to Abraham and his people, or to the promises given to Moses and his nation. We are not um, associated genetically with either of those covenant promises. But even though that's true, from all of this today at the close of Leviticus, we learn how God thinks. Uh, we learn a little bit about what makes him tick, you might say, and I say that in all respect. We see a pattern. You have to respect the pattern. The pattern is, when you obey the Lord, good things tend to happen. And if you disobey the Lord, bad things tend to happen. Uh, lucky breaks, in quotes, right? Lucky breaks tend to happen to those who obey the Lord. And so that's our life lesson. Be blessable. You know how the Lord thinks. He likes for people to obey, and he likes to send favors to people who obey. You know that now because you've seen it in the Old Testament. Respect the pattern. And so that's what we're going to pray for right now. I'd like to lead you in a prayer out loud, and you pray in your hearts right along with me. And we are going to uh, freshly commit ourselves to be maximally obedient to the Lord so that we also are maximally blessable. So let's pray together. Father God, we do commit ourselves right now to be maximally obedient to you because we do indeed want to be maximally uh, blessed. And today, Lord, 
we give our hearts freshly to you, knowing that you love our obedience and we trust you. Uh, we honestly believe in you. So we will follow you maximally. And we commit this to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, congratulations. Do you know what you've just done today? You have finished reading the book of Leviticus. This is the very hardest book in the entire Bible. Nothing we do in our Bible in a year plus podcast will be as hard as what we've just finished in Leviticus. You've done it. So God bless you today. Thank you for joining us for day 42 of our Bible in a year plus podcast. And I sure hope I get to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.